Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can quickly find the entry point to iOS applications for reverse engineering. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the main application, we're going to extract the executable component, and then we're going to throw that inside of Ghidra so we could begin our reverse engineering or our analysis. So let's get right into it. So I already have a sample that's on Malwarebazaar, and I'll go ahead and share the link to this sample in the comments section of this video. And if we scroll down here, we see that this is actually an IPA file. So what you need to know about IPA files is they're actually the main application package for iOS applications. So they're going to contain all of the different executable code, resource files, icons, etc. inside of this IPA binary. And if we go down here, we can see that this is actually part of the Goontact malware family. And this is an info stealer that actually targets iOS applications on different iOS devices. So I already have this downloaded and I'm going to open up my file explorer. And remember, we have our IPA file type. So this is going to contain all of the components inside of here for running this application. And one thing to note is you may want to just try throwing this whole IPA file into Ghidra, but this is actually a bad idea because this contains all of the different components. So what we want to do is we want to actually first extract those components from this bundle. So this is actually just a special kind of zip file. So all we need to do is use 7-zip or the unzip program of your choice. And we can just extract all of the components right here. And you're going to get this payload folder. And inside of this payload folder, we actually get our application bundle that's going to contain all of the other components that we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this .app folder. And if we look inside of here, let me make sure you can see this. We can see we have our icon for this particular application, but I'm actually looking for a very special file called info.plist, which is going to name the main executable for this particular application. So let me see if I can find it in here. And here it is right here. And I'm going to open this up in Notepad++. Here I have right here. And this is what it's going to look like, but what we're actually looking for is a particular tag called execute. CF bundle executable is going to be the key. And then the string value inside of here is actually going to be the name of the main executable for this application. So in this case, the application is going to be called photograph demo. So that's going to be the name of the file that we're actually looking for, for our actual binary analysis. I'm going to close this out and let's see if we can find that actual photograph demo. Yeah, photograph demo string, which is going to be the name of our file we're looking for. And it looks like it's right here. And one thing to note, this photograph demo executable is actually going to be a Mac O binary. And if you're familiar with Mac analysis or reverse engineering, you might be happy to know that this is the same file type that is actually used on Mac devices as well. So they're both going to be of type Mac O binaries. So you might already have some familiarity there. Now, this is going to be the starting point where we can actually begin our analysis inside of Ghidra. I'm going to open up my Ghidra instance and let this load. And I'm going to create a new project for this. I'm going to do file, new project, and I'll call this, what was the name of our malware family? Goontact. So I'm going to call this Goontact. And then maybe we'll call this iOS. Finish that. And what we need to do is we need to throw this main Mako binary into Ghidra and actually let it do its decompilation and analysis. I'm going to drop that in here. And the main thing to understand for this, why we're getting this container file detected prompt by Ghidra, is that these Mako binaries can actually contain support 
for multiple different instruction set architectures. So for example, if it wanted to support a 32-bit and a 64-bit version of ARM, it would actually bundle all of the different instruction set architectures that this application is able to run on. So all the different instruction set architectures that might be running on different devices. And it bundles those inside of this binary. So we have to actually choose which processor architecture we want to do our analysis of. And basically, it's just preference of which one you would prefer to analyze. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick batch. And this allows us to select which processor architectures that we would like to import into Ghidra for our analysis. And I'm just going to choose the 32-bit version of ARM. So I'll just uncheck this. Click OK. So now this is importing the actual file for us. We can expand this. This is our app name. And then this is going to be the 32-bit version of ARM that we can actually analyze inside of Ghidra. So I'm going to double click to start off our analysis. Yes, we would like to analyze this. And I'm also going to check the additional decompiler parameter ID. So this is just going to do some additional analysis of our binary, although it might take a little bit of extra time, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to do analyze. And then this is kicking off the actual analysis process where Ghidra is actually taking all of the different instructions that are part of this application and decompiling them and then finding the entry point, the classes, methods, etc. that belong to this app. Now I've given this some time to actually analyze our application and don't worry if it takes a good amount of time, just let it finish its analysis process. And it's found the actual entry symbol for our application. So I'm going to hit yes, I would like to go to the actual entry point that is defined for our main Maco binary. And if we wanted to look at some of the different classes or methods that are also defined inside of this, I can go over to my classes and functions tabs. Let me see if I can expand that a little. And this is probably where I would begin my analysis. Let me see if I can find something interesting. Um, maybe here. Here's a couple functions that are actually going to get decompiled once we select them and begin our analysis. Or optionally, you can use search, find strings, and this is going to show you all of the different strings that are part of this application if you found something interesting to begin your analysis process. But we'll get into more of the reverse engineering aspect of this, of the actual binary, in future videos. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. In this video, we saw how we could quickly find the entry point of iOS applications if we had an IPA file, which was the main application bundle for different iOS applications. And we saw how inside of this bundle, it contained the main executable code, as well as the info.plist file, which actually listed what was the name of the main executable that actually contained the underlying code. We also saw how this executable was in the form of a MACO binary, which could optionally contain support for a bunch of different instruction set architectures that this application would be able to run on. And we threw this actual MACO binary into Ghidra so we could begin our reverse engineering and analysis process. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next video. Yes. I think I can get this one. Yes.